Hey guys, how you doing on those New Year's resolutions? Did you set a resolution last week and you're already starting to falter? This video can help. Stay tuned. Okay, so first things first. Don't beat yourself up if this is what's happening to you. It's normal. You know, we all eat a salad and then the next day when we don't lose five pounds, we're wondering what the hell is wrong with us and we give up. Okay, that's, you're not alone in that. <laughs> um, secondly, Hopefully what we're going to talk about today can help a little bit, at least keep you to stay on track and not give up so easily. And what we're going to talk about is SMART goals. SMART goals are something I'm sure you've heard about. Everybody's talking about them uh, because they work, right? They've been evidence-based to work. And SMART goals are something that I'm going to help you set and help you try to make a more realistic um, resolution or goal for yourself so that it's easier to stick to. Okay, so you might want to grab a pen and paper because to keep notes on this is actually probably a really good thing because as much as it seems like it's second nature or really kind of obvious, it really isn't. It goes against everything that we as human beings like to do. We like to set huge, large goals of you know, I'm going to be a millionaire or, you know, whatever it is. And we don't understand that bringing it down and dumbing it down into something very small is actually a better way to do things. So grab my pen and paper. We're going to go through what a SMART goal is, how to write one, and how to keep one. Okay? So SMART is an acronym for a goal. So what we're going to do is go through this one at a time, and then we'll talk about each one. S is for specific, M, measurable, A, achievable, R, relevant, and T, time bound. S, specific. I don't know about you, but this is where I get hung up. I always want to say, well, I'll eat healthier, or I'll lose weight, or I'll get more fit, or I'll exercise more. Do these sound familiar? Okay, so this is where the SMART goal is really, really effective, I think, personally. You want to take this large goal of, I want to lose weight. And I'm going to use that one because it seems to be, unfortunately, <laughs> for most of us, the most relevant one as women, anyway. Um, so I want to lose weight. That's not specific at all, right? I could lose, you know, a half a pound by not drinking as much water tomorrow as I do today. That's not really what I mean when I say I want to lose weight, right? I mean, I want to look better. I want to feel better. I want to get my cholesterol levels, you know, right. I want to get my triglycerides down. Whatever it is, there's a very specific reason. So what I want you to do is take a few minutes and kind of lay out all of the specific reasons that you want to do whatever goal it is. Pause this video and if, if it is lose weight, then write down all of those things. You know, I want my joints to feel better. I want to be there for my grandkids. I want to um, look better. I want to feel better. Whatever those are, write those all out and then choose one. Choose the most relevant one for you that you think is the real priority of a reason that you want to lose weight. And I'll see you back here. Okay, M, measurable. <laughs> this is another tough one. I think, you know, a lot of us feel like we are measuring our goals. We're, you know, keeping food logs or, um, you know, we're journaling every day or we're writing something on the calendar. But what I have come to found out, find out after like six years of trying to do this kind of stuff is I wasn't really, really keeping track of stuff. Um, so I think... One of the challenges here is how do you measure it, right? And so what I want to help you do is whatever your specific goal is, let's say you want to feel better if you lose weight. That's not a, that's not a specific goal and that's not measurable. Um, it might seem like it. You, it might seem like, okay, my, my specific goal is I want to feel better and I can measure that by keeping track of how I feel every day. The problem is it doesn't really work. We really have to get super, super specific down to, I want to feel
feel like I did two years ago. And what does that mean? What does that, I want to feel like I did two years ago. Well, two years ago, I felt like I had more energy. Okay, so now we're down to the, the specific goal is I want to have more energy. Okay, so that might work. It, it, it's even better to go more specific than that. But if we try, you know, I want to have more energy, then the measurement for that would be how much did you get done that day? Like how many cups of coffee did you drink? You know, something to that effect. And again, if you message me or you comment on this video, I can try to help you kind of put these in, into practice and kind of write them because it's a little difficult the first couple times you do it. But the good news is as you start using Smart Goal um, technology, if you will, um, it'll get easier and easier. But we want it to be measurable. So if you do something like your triglycerides or high cholesterol or your blood pressure, obviously those are way easier, right? You, you take your blood pressure every day and you can measure whether or not what you're doing is helping to achieve that goal. So again, the more specific you get, the easier it will be to measure that. And I would highly suggest that, you know, with the, the I want to lose weight, part of the problem with that, that, that overall goal is of course, the only way to measure that is on a scale and, and that is not accurate. And we all know that, but we still do it, right? We still get on that scale and oh, you know, I'm a failure because I didn't lose two pounds this week or whatever. And that's just not accurate, especially if you're doing um, toning and weight training at all. Even if you're just using five pound dumbbells, you're still building muscle and exchanging those fat cells for muscle cells. And therefore a weight measurement is not a good indicator of that. So I would highly suggest <laughs> that your SMART goal come way, way down specific. And it's not anything to do with losing weight and measuring that with a scale. A, achievable. This is another one I think we get hung up on a lot where, you know, we see somebody at a higher fitness level achieving what we want to achieve. Or we see someone with a, a larger following, let's say, on YouTube achieving what we want to achieve. And we think we can do that too, you know, and we're kind of born out of that. I don't know about the younger generations, but at least for my generation and older, you know, we were told to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and you can be anything you want to be, you know, all you have to do is work hard. And that's true to some degree. However, I want to caution you to start where you are. Um, I know that it has taken me over six years of pretty concerted effort to get where I am today. And I'm not where I want to be yet. I'm, I'm very, very close, but um, it has been a lot of trial and error. It has been a lot of small, smart goals. It has been a lot of two steps forward, one step back. So if six years ago, you know, at 165 pounds without any muscle on me at all, I decided that I was going to be a bikini competitor, fitness competitor in six months. That would not have been achievable at all. Um, as a matter of fact, it has taken four years and I'm not sure I'm even ready yet, but we'll see. Um, and so what I, what I really would caution you to do is, is, is this really achievable? To say I want to lose two pounds a week. Is that realistic? You would really, really have to be in deficit for that. You would have to be 1,500 calories every single day in deficit for seven days in order to achieve that goal. I don't think that's realistic for most of us. As a matter of fact, I don't even think it's realistic for me, okay? And I, I exercise and lift a lot. So we want to we make sure that the SMART goal is something that we can actually attain and achieve because, of course, what is the point of setting a goal if all we're going to do is, is give up? five days later because it's not working. So we really want to have something in place. Like I want to lose a half a pound a week. Again, that's measurable. It's very specific. Um, and it's probably achievable if you have set your mind to do so. And we'll get to the time bound thing in a minute, but I think what's great about that specific goal is that it, you have every seven days a way to measure and a way to keep yourself moving forward and being accountable for that. So Again, in the example of losing weight, you have to make sure it's achievable and not put yourself so far out that you give up a week later because it's not working. R, is your goal relevant? And what I mean by that is, 
do you really want to lose weight? Is that really the thing that's going to get you what you want? So let's say that in that whole list of specific reasons you wanted to lose weight, you came down to the one that said, I want more energy. Let's stick with that. Is losing weight really going to give you more energy? We don't really know, right? Presumably it will, but if it's not relevant to the actual goal, again, you're going to falter, you're going to fall off, you're not going to see the results and you're going to lose faith and you're going to just quit. So we need to make sure that whatever that specific goal is, it's relevant to what you actually want to achieve. So I want more energy. I want to feel like I did five years ago, two years ago, whatever. Maybe losing a half a pound a week is not actually what you need to do. Maybe walking every day outside is what you need to do. Maybe meditating a half an hour a day is what you need to do. Maybe making sure that you have a great sleep hygiene is what you need to do. This is why you kind of have to look at all five at one time and kind of go back and forth to write a SMART goal. You can't just start with S and then just keep going down. You kind of have to hone all this stuff in and make sure that it's all working together. So relevant, is losing a half a pound a week going to give you more energy? Maybe or maybe not, but maybe there's something else that you feel you know works that you've tried before. Like I said, sleep hygiene or um, swimming or, you know, there's, there might be something which then goes all the way back up to S, which is I will swim you know, twice a week, or I will make a, a sleep hygiene schedule or, or something like that. So again, they all have to work together. And if your goal isn't relevant to what your actual outcome, what the chief desired outcome is, then you're not going to stick to it. T, time bound. I think that this is probably the most important letter <laughs> in the SMART goal acronym, because if we don't have a deadline, um, we kind of just kind of, you know, we're, we're a cork bobbing on the ocean. We have no idea if we're achieving our goal, how we're achieving our goal, um, when we're going to achieve our goal, if ever. And so time bound, and, and this is really important. You can't say, I want to lose weight in the next year, right? In 2022, I'm going to journal more. Well, what does that mean? I mean, we're talking 12 months here. Are you actually going to stick to that schedule in July when all the festivals are going on and it's nice out and you want to go to the beach? No, <laughs> absolutely not. So I think, you know, when you get down to the specific, specific and time bound kind of mean the same thing to some degree. And what I mean by that is you want to have a, a very specific, I will journal once a week for the next 12 months, for the next 52 weeks. That way, it, every seven days, you can come back and say, oh, I didn't achieve my goal, or I did achieve my goal, or you can even set an alarm on your phone, right, for, for six, day six that says, remember to journal, so that you, oh, I remember I got, you know, I have to journal before tomorrow, or I'm gonna, not going to reach my goal. And that makes, that, that increases self-efficacy, right? It, it increases our confidence that we can achieve a goal and keep moving toward it. So... The, like I said, the half a pound a week or, you know, one pound a month, that gives you this time bound um, finality that you can kind of pat yourself on the back, give yourself a little treat, you know, um, reinforce your self-efficacy and the confidence that you have in yourself and the trust that you're able to achieve your goals. It's really quite important, I think. Um, so having said all that, like I said, send me a message um, or you know make a comment here. If you need help in any regard or you need me to clarify something or expound on something that I haven't talked about here, I really want you guys to achieve your New Year's resolutions or your goals or whatever it is. And I know that this is right around the time we all start to say, well, it's not working. I think I'm just gonna give up. So hopefully um, by watching this video, you can you know, you can keep moving forward toward your goal and feel good about yourself. So, I love you guys. Thank you for being here and I will talk to you soon. Bye.